Hey, this is Safi from LinkedInRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, we're going to learn a fingerstyle arrangement I made especially for you guys and girls for Christmas of Jingle Bell Rock. Actually, it was on request by one of my Skype students, so you have got him to thank for this. First, I'm going to play it for you and then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen as usual. Enjoy, it goes like this. Now, let's start. The song starts with a very simple yet effective double stop solo. Double stops is playing two notes at the same time um, and it's, it just outlines chords all the way. It's harmonies, different, different harmonies and it outlines the chords of the song. That's how smart it is. It's very simple, very effective and very smart. You start with this, seven on the first string, eight on the second string. Okay, seven, eight. So you play that three times, then you bar the seventh fret on the first and second strings and you play that, seven and seven. Okay, so this is G because it's the high notes of the G chord. And this is D6. Okay, so 7 and 8, 7 and 7. You play them three times. Then you slide back into the 7 and 7 from the 6th fret. So you do this, 7, 7, 7, then slide from 6 to 7 on both the 1st and 2nd strings. So that's how it sounds like. It's just... And then you put your pinky on the 10th fret of the E string. You keep the bar on, you don't have any time to take it off anyway, um, and you play 10 and 7, okay, on the 1st and 2nd strings. This is also D, this is a D chord. Now let's, uh, D chord, it's not a D chord, but it's a D outline. It hints at a D chord, because of the G shape, okay. And then you do this. 8 on the 2nd string, 7 on the 3rd string, so it's 8 and 7, okay? You take that 2 frets up to 10 and 9, you play that, then you bend it a half tone, okay? You just bend it a little, okay? Both of them. And then you play it unbent again. Okay, don't worry, I'm gonna repeat everything, and then you go back to 8 and 7. Right? So what you get is 8 and 7, 10 and 9, bend it, unbend it, 8 and 7 again. So... Okay, got it? 8 and 7, 10 and 9, bent, played regularly, unbent, then back to 8 and 7. 
So what we have so far is this. Now all we have left is this. This is C. This is G. Okay, so... Now it's 5 and 5 on the 2nd and 3rd strings. I play it with my pinky and 3rd finger because that allows me to get these two ready for 3 and 4. Okay, so 5 and 5, 3 and 4. 3 on the 2nd string, 4 on the 3rd string. You can also put them together. Okay, so... And get them ready just in time. So, 7 and 8, 7 and 7, slide, 10 and 7, 8 and 7, 10 and 9, bend, unbend, 8 and 7, 5, 5, 3, 4. One last time. Okay, so you're finished with the double stop solo, then the little bass move, um, or open D string once or twice, then three to zero on the A string, the fifth string. And you're done with the intro. Now, the song itself has three verses. Okay, now some people uh, treat the second verse as the chorus, but there's a third verse. So what do you call that? The post-chorus? Um, so it's just three different verses. We're gonna learn all three. I transcribed this, um, the original is in D, but I arranged it into the key of G to make it more comfortable to play on the guitar. Um, and so we start with the G chord. And you want to put uh, two fingers on the third fret of the first and sixth strings, okay, the E strings. Now I use the pinky and the third finger. Uh, you can use the third finger and the second finger as long as you have one finger free for the second fret because you're going to need it in a second you're fine just don't play it like this or like this because a you're not gonna play the the a string here um, because if you use Travis Bacon and I recommend to use the D string as your second string all the time uh, it sounds a little bit better than okay this creates a fifth interval um, instead of this which is the third interval and it sounds a little bit off when you play it as a bass line um, so three two and zero those are the frets you're going to need here for this first phrase now it's all in the G chord so you keep the bass on and you just move the rest of the fingers um, and the lick is very simple. The phrase is three, 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 two, two, two on the first string. Again, you can play the chord along with it once or throughout. Okay, whatever works for you. Um, and then zero, two, zero, same string. Okay, first string. Then on the second string, Zero, three. So you have three, 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 two, 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 zero, two, zero. Open second string, three on the second string. Okay, that's it. So. Um, okay, very simple, yet I made a mistake. See, that happens to everyone. So. Okay, you can play it in any way you want. Yeah, you can arpeggiate the chords if you want. Okay, it works. It's a mellow song. Mellow songs 
work in pretty much any way you want to play them. Then you play 0 to 0 again on the first string, still with the G bass going on. Um, then you take the finger off of the bass note. You can either put on an E minor chord or just play uh, open strings. Just play strings 2 and 3 open with the open bass note. Okay, that outlines an E minor chord. And then three on the second string. Okay, so the melody was zero three on the second string again. Okay, but this time with E minor. Okay, now if you're a little confused, let's repeat the second phrase. The second phrase is still G, zero two zero on the first string, zero three on the second string with E minor. Okay? So what we had is this, G, still G, still G, still G, E minor, okay? Just at the last lick, you change into E minor, okay? So that's the first phrase, the first and second phrases. Um, then you move into A minor and you play Okay, you play the chord, then 2 0 on the first string. So it's again 0 2 0 on the first string. Same melody line we played twice already. And then D7, and you play strings 2, 3, and 4. Okay? D7 is 2 1 2 on the first, second, and third string. Okay? So you play the second, third, and fourth strings. So we had this. E minor. A minor. D7. Not too difficult, right? I think you're keeping up pretty well. Now, the next phrase. A minor and D sus2. Now, on A minor, you play the bass note, A, the A string, along with the G string on 2. So you play this, and then on the second string, 0, 1. So you take the finger off and put it back on again. Then you put on this, okay, 3 and 2 on the second and third strings. This is D sus2, because we're playing strings 2, 3, and 4, and then the open E string. Okay, so this is D sus2. Now, technically, we're playing a D chord, and the open E string is the melody, but we're putting on a D sus2 shape, so that makes it easier to remember. So, okay, got it? A minor. D sus2. Okay, strings 2, 3, and 4, then the open E string. Then you do the same lick again, but you don't play the E string at the end. That's it. That's the next two phrases A minor and D sus2. Then again, but this time, you keep it a D5 chord because you're not playing the E strings, so you have no idea if it's a minor, a major, or a sus chord. You just have the fifth. So this is a D5 now. So now there is a first ending to this and the second ending. So the first ending stays on G, uh, on G, on D. Don't know why I said G. The first ending uh, just stays on D. And you play the bass again. And this time you play the second and third strings. And you can play them both. Or keep playing the, th uh, the second string on three. Three more times. So it sounds like this. Or want to play both of them. 
Both versions work. Then A minor, you play the chord. The melody note is the E string. Then one on the second string. It's in the chord. Then D again. And you play the second, third, and fourth strings again. So you had this. Eh? D? Actually, D5. D5, A minor, D5 again. That's the first ending. So, uh, the verse, the first verse, with the first ending. E minor. A minor. D. Okay? That's the first ending. Now, the second ending is A minor. And you play the bass, the A string, then the chord, then the E string again. Then you put on D, and you play the first and fourth strings, then the second string, then G. And you play the chord. Okay, the melody note is three on the E string. So you had. A minor, D, G. So the first verse with the second ending. Okay? And we're done with the first verse. The second verse um, remains on G. Uh, no, actually it doesn't. <laughs> you start on the G chord, remember? And you do 0, 3 on the E string. And that's the end of the G chord this time. You start with this. This is C6. You bar the third fret and you bar the fifth fret, so it's a double bar. And you bar this on the first, second, and third strings, because this is finger style, so we'll play strings one, two, three, and five, so there's no need to double bar it all the way to the fourth fret, uh, to the fourth string. So it's, uh, what you get here is this. Now it's uncomfortable, but it's only for a second because we're playing this. And then we change back to a normal C chord. So, okay, five, 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 three on the fifth string. Okay, so. And then you uh, take the, bar, the second bar off and you play three on the E string, you bar it, and you put on C while you're at it. Now, um, C is A-shaped on the fifth fret, and you don't have to put all of this on, you can just put these two fingers on uh, again because we don't have to play the D string here. Um, you can just put the pinky and the third finger on the fifth fret of the first of the second and third strings. Calling out all these numbers is very confusing. Um, and then you get the C chord if you play strings one, two, three, and five. You don't have to put this on, so you can just avoid it, and that makes it a little bit easier. Um, so, okay. If you find this easy then do it, but I think it's a lot quicker this way, okay? with two fingers. Um, so that's what you play. You play, and then you play the bass again, if you want, then you play strings two, and then one on five and three, so you get that's the first phrase, and then this. 
This is kind of a C sharp diminished chord. Okay, it's not precisely a diminished chord, it's basically C6 over C sharp. It's still C6, but with a C sharp bass note because we're playing this. Okay, but technically we're outlining C sharp diminished chord. These two fingers that you just put on the second and third strings, take them down, okay, down physically, up musically, um, to the first and second strings on five. Put your third finger on four on the A string, the fifth string, and play it. Okay, you can play the third string, okay, you can play strings one, two, three, and four. Then take the pinky off, put your first finger on three on the E string and play that. So it's five three again, that's the melody on the first string but with a slightly different harmony. So C6, C, C sharp diminished. Okay? Now I had to work on the transition for a while, so to get uh, to get comfortable with it. Okay, so if this is uncomfortable for you, just work on that. Just take the C6, C, C sharp diminished move and just practice that. Okay, don't practice anything else. Just sit and practice that for 10, 15 minutes and I promise you the next time you get back to the guitar it'll become a lot easier so that's the first phrase of the second verse now it goes back to G and you play this okay still G all the way the melody this time is 3-3 three, three, uh, on the uh, on the E string the first string then 2-0 on the first string 3-0 on the second string. So 3-3-2-0-3-0. Three, three, zero, three, zero. Then 0-3 on the E string again. And then this. You bar the second fret up to the fourth string you have the A bass open because this is A with a high A note, five on the E string with your pinky. Prepare the second finger on three, okay, or prepare it to be played on three on the E string, so you'll have, okay, this is the melody, okay, so A with a high A note, Five on the E string, then three on the E string, pinky on five on the second string, and you play second string on five, first string on three. Okay, you don't take the second finger off, and then you play the same thing five, three on the first string. Okay, so. It. That's why I prefer to put this finger straight away because it's going to stay there for the rest of the phrase. So 5, 3 on the E string, 5 on B, 3 on E, 5, 3, again. Okay? That's that's basically it. It's just that's it. But you have to have the A chord on that's what makes it a little bit uncomfortable so but again practice it for 15 minutes as long as it's concentrated 15 minutes where you just concentrate on playing it it will work magic okay just put the guitar away go do something go to sleep then when you wake up it'll be a lot easier okay as long as you practice um, and you're concentrated on what you're playing, uh, you don't have to practice for long. You just have to repeat it and just 
focus on it. So, um, we need to play it again. Let's play it again. So. Then the final line of the second verse, D again, okay? You start with D sus2, but you're gonna need the second fret here. So you play strings two, three, and four, then the second string again, and then on the first string, zero, 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 two, zero, then three on the second string again. Okay, so you can put D on like this without the finger here and then put it on for a second, so. Okay, just keep the chord ringing in the background. So that's the second verse. We're done with the second verse, so C6, C, C, C sharp diminished, G, A. This is A7, by the way, when you're playing three. A, A7, D. You can also hammer on the two. Yeah, you can embellish it to your heart's content. You can find other ways to play this. No, no, you can find your own way to play this. You don't have to play it exactly as it's written. It's a guitar arrangement, okay? So you can make of it whatever you want. Now, the last and final verse, uh, the third verse. The third verse starts exactly the same way that the first one does, G. Exactly the same. And then it continues exactly the same. Except for one small change. You don't change into E minor, you stay on G. So 0 to 0, 0 on the second string, 3 on the second string, and you're still on G. Okay, so it's G all the way without E minor. Why? Because now you change into E7. Now, E7, you leave the pinky on the 3rd fret of the 2nd string, okay, where it is, if you're using the pinky. If you're using this, then you're using the 3rd finger, so you can use that, even though it's a little bit uncomfortable. So change into the pinky, um, and you add E7 here, uh, 1 on the G string, 2 on the A string, okay, and you have... E7. Now um, you just play the chord. That's it. So you have G, still G, E7. Then that dreaded C6 again. And you play it again. Uh, 555 five, five, and 3 on the A string. The double bar. Then you play the E string again, then you change into C minor, and you play the, um, the bass again, the C bass again, with strings 1, 2, and 1, okay, so it's, you can also harmonize, okay, you can play the chord, so C6 to C minor. Then the same A to A7 line. Okay, this time it's 5 3 on the E string, 5 on the second string, and 3 again on the E string. Okay, you just finish on A7 there. Okay, <clears throat> don't worry, we're almost done. We've got the final phrase. A minor, 
you play the bass, you play the chord, then you play three on the E string, okay, making this A minor seven, technically. Then D, you play the entire chord, including the E string, this is the melody. Then three, five on the E string, then you finish on G. So A minor, D, G. And you're done. So the third verse, G. Six, C minor, A7, A minor, D, G. And before you go practice this, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons waiting for you to learn, so click subscribe and become a member of the community. Go download the tab from the website, the link is in the description below, and it's for free, everything on Lick and Riff is for free, but if you wish to give something back and help out, I'd be very grateful for any donation you choose to give. There's a donation button, be, uh, not below, above the tab on the website, a, a large donation button, you can't miss it, and everything goes right back into Lick and Riff, into making the arrangements, practicing them, filming the lessons, uh, editing them, uploading them. It all takes time and effort. So if you want to help out, I thank you in advance for it. You go practice this, make your own arrangement, play it the way you want to play it. And, you know, feel free to change stuff around if you don't like what I did with it. Um, and just have fun with it. Play it for your friends, your family, your enemies, your imaginary friends, your pets, uh, and just have fun. Don't forget. Enjoy. That's the most important thing. So Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very, very much for watching. Bye for now.